Hello everyone, my name is Deja Williams. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm a graduate of Missouri University of Science and Technology. I currently live in LA, where I work as an engineer for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But my favorite part about my life is my passion for creating a world where math and science are no longer intimidating. I wanna first off say thank you to the Science Teachers Association of Texas, and you all, for allowing me to be your keynote speaker. Now don't take this the wrong way, but frankly speaking, I think this was a mistake. Not a mistake in the way you may be thinking, but a mistake that helps me escape the boundaries or boxes people put me in. And when I think back on my life, it's been full of just that, mistakes. Mistakes that have allowed me to slip through the cracks and accomplish my wildest dreams. I can remember all the way back to second grade, I was living in the inner city and on the path that would have led me to an unaccredited high school. But my mom caught wind of a desegregation program, and yes, it was called the desegregation program. But it would allow me to attend a top tier school in the county of St. Louis. She applied, and they said the waiting list was full, but somehow I still got in, while almost every other black student on my block got denied. I think it was a mistake. Fast forward a few months, I'm finally attending the school and it's a struggle because I had to catch up to my peers. All of us city kids, as they called us, had to. But there was one student, I think her name was Aaliyah, and she had it. She was smarter than all of us. She was the one that I would lean on when something in class just didn't make sense. But one day, a counselor walked in and grabbed her from my third grade class to take her to a second grade class, literally in the middle of the semester. I was only eight or nine, but I was panicking because I knew I was next. You know, the panic you feel when police lights go off behind you, but you're relieved because it was for another car? Yeah, that panic. I waited and I waited, even braced for that moment when my name would be called. But they never came. I got to stay. I think it was a mistake. Because fourth grade, I struggled. A fifth grade, I struggled. And in sixth grade, I really struggled. I thought maybe I should have been the one who was taken out of class instead of Aaliyah. I just couldn't keep up. Assignments piled up, distractions increased, calls home were more frequent. To tell you the truth, I just didn't feel like I belonged. And I didn't. I felt like an outcast. I mean, imagine being piled on a bus and shipped out to the white neighborhood. Imagine being one of two or three black kids in your class every single year. Imagine your bus back home being in the back of the school instead of the front, which was reserved for the neighborhood kids to be picked up. Imagine being asked, are you a part of the DSEG program because of the color of your skin? and not knowing how to answer because you knew you would be treated differently if you said yes. Imagine navigating this as a preteen on top of all the struggles as an awkward middle schooler. I can tell you now, it wasn't easy. And side note, can you believe they have the nerve to be ending the program instead of improving it? I don't know, by maybe not calling it the desegregation program. Either way, I can't say it was all bad because I was getting a great education after all. And those years certainly prepared me because by the seventh grade, things started to click for me a little. Now don't get me wrong, I still struggled, but my grades were improving and my confidence was growing. I was learning how to study. I was more engaged in class. I turned in my assignments on time. I even got my first hundred on a math test. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. Well, that was until I got a D on my report card in political science, and I had to convince my mom that that too was a mistake. But that moment didn't negate how proud my mom was that I was improving. In fact, the smile that it brought on her face when I told her good news about school became addicting to me. So by the eighth grade, I was going crazy. 
I was at the top of my class on honor roll. I got student of the week, not once, but twice after never receiving it in my earlier years. I felt like a superstar. I had finally figured it out. And to top it off, I received a letter in the mail stating that I was being enrolled in honors math once I got to high school. I was so proud. I boasted and I bragged to my whole family. I even went to speak with the math teacher who was responsible for enrolling me. I walked into her class eager and excited, and I told her, I'm nervous, but I think I can do this. I think I can do well in honors math. Thank you for believing in me. She stared back at me, rather confused, <laughs> and y'all wanna know what she told me? I think you know. She said, Deja, it was a mistake. My heart dropped like an anchor, and along with it came my confidence, my love for school, my love for her as a teacher. She even did me a favor by offering to take me out of the class and re-enroll me into normal geometry. But by this time, I knew that mistakes were my strength. Mistakes gave me a second chance. Mistakes had me showing a whole generation of students how cool math and science can be. So I went ahead and I took the class. And I'll tell you this, this mistake got an A. And the trend continued as I took Algebra 2, Pre-Calc, Calculus. So much so that I ended up having the top GPA amongst African Americans at my school every single year and graduated within the top 15% of my class. This all may not have happened without that mistake she made. This skill in finding the value in my mishaps led me to Missouri S&T, where, you guessed it, I made even more mistakes. As a freshman, I went into the career fair with my resume that only filled half the page, got an interview, and bombed it. That mistake prepared me for the next opportunity, an internship at Dot Foods that was offered to me right on the spot. As a sophomore, I stopped giving my all to basketball and had to leave my full ride scholarship on the table. This mistake made room for me to go back home and intern for one of the largest companies in St. Louis, Anheuser-Busch. My junior year, I attended my local community college instead of returning to my university. This mistake exposed me to the National Society of Black Engineers Convention, where I received opportunities from companies like John Deere and Toyota. In my senior year, after speaking with my advisor, I learned that I wouldn't have enough credits to graduate on time. But it didn't even matter because this mistake gave me the time to intern with Apple and the experience I needed to land a full-time job as an engineer at NASA before I even graduated. As you see, one mistake always led to another. But I think the secret is being able to take a negative situation and make it work in your favor. Because these mistakes in life, they help us discover things about ourselves and the world around us just like a mistake in science would. We can't think about if a mistake will happen. We must think about what we will do when they happen. Think about this when teaching becomes overwhelming or maybe a student isn't performing at their best, especially in a time like this. Embrace those challenges and recognize that some of our best moments in life wouldn't exist without them. I hope today helped as we navigate educating through a pandemic. I hope this provided you all with the evidence that we must give our students a second chance because we're all in this together. And who knows, you may be cultivating the next NASA engineer. We can't let mistakes get in the way of that. Thank you.